Hi. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we call a T-score. And it turns out that a T-score is very, very similar to something you already know. A T-score is very much like the Z-score that you've been calculating all semester. If you look at these formulas that I have here, these formulas look like the formulas that you see for a Z-score, except if you notice, instead of having the population mean and the population standard deviation, we have a sample mean and a sample standard deviation. This is the formula when you calculate a T-score. This is the formula when you calculate a T-score when you're working with a sampling distribution. So if you have a sample of size n, you plug into this. Again, it's just x minus the sample mean divided by the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. This thing looks a whole lot like what we had talked about earlier with the standard deviation of a sampling distribution. These things are very, very useful when you don't know the population standard deviation. This is the formula that you will be using when you're dealing with confidence intervals and when you're dealing with hypothesis testing when you do not know the population standard deviation. You always have some standard deviation, but the standard deviation that you'll have in this case is the sample standard deviation. It turns out that this thing relates to something known as a T distribution. The T distribution is very similar to the normal distribution that we've talked about already. It's sort of a bell-shaped curve, but it's a little flatter. It doesn't go up quite as far, and it moves out a little bit further. It turns out that when you calculate out critical values, which if you remember right, is the area underneath the curve here out in the tail, this critical value is going to be a little bit bigger than the z-score because you have a little bit less certainty. You don't know the population value. You only know the value of the standard deviation for the sample that you're working with. You have more uncertainty, so it turns out the critical values will be a little bit bigger. This distribution is actually kind of interesting. It was developed in the early 1900s and, well, late 1800s or early 1900s, but the first time it was actually published in English, it was published by a guy by the name of William Seeley Gossett, and he worked for a company called Guinness and he had to actually publish his paper under a fictitious name. He wrote the paper under the name student. And that's why in a lot of books you will see the T distribution referred to as the student's T distribution because Gossett actually wrote this. Basically, his company didn't want to let out the secret that they were using this really cool thing in order to get better results for their quality control process. And so you'll be using this a lot in the next few sections.